Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hope you are doing well. I'm your host, Sean Grant, and this is The Money Cure. We are streaming live on the airways as well as Facebook. Facebook Live as well, which is really, really cool to kind of get an insight on both Side. So with that being said, hope your Saturday is going absolutely terrific. Hope you are feeling your absolute best. Hope your day is bringing you all the blessings you could ever desire. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the money is flowing into your life to allow you to do, be and have all that you wish. OK, so today is a very special episode because I say they all special episodes, but this is really special because this one is coming directly from my heart in my own experience, and it sort of uh, caters to the idea of what kids go through when they're graduating high school, especially, but also college, um, mainly those two arenas, right? Not so much middle school. Yeah, that's a challenging time, but um, more so high school, more so college, and you may be asking yourself, okay, Sean, well, how does this tie into um, the money cure? Well, if you're a parent, <laughs> or even if you're an uncle or an aunt, or you're the guardian of any child, the number one thing you likely want for that child is to set up some sort of security within their lives financially, right? Um I'm looking at two, three, four generations back of myself being 38 years old. And that was the number one thing that that those generations really wanted their kids to establish. But there's something that you really have to take into account when diving into this. And you also really have to, I think it's important to sit down with your kids Okay, because a lot of times, if we're not sitting down for not allowing them to tell what it is that they really enjoy doing, then we don't really know, right? So, and I say this, I don't even have kids, but I just kind of, this is intuitive. This is what I feel. And this is what I would do with my kids, is that you really have to help them to understand what it is they truly love what it is they truly enjoy, what it is they truly desire to do. And the, the, the number one most important thing is to not dismiss, okay, to not um, do anything detrimental to them feeling strongly about that thing, right? And that goes from video games to building like toy horses in the mud, you have absolutely no idea how creative source is and how source will take something that seems like absolutely nonsense to 10 million people and give it to one child and have that child all of a sudden make the greatest change in the world. That's how you have to think, right? Especially when it comes to our kids going to high school or going to college. Okay. And I'll give you a bit of background on my own self. So I can remember when I was going to college, when I was going to university, I didn't know what I wanted to major in, but I knew I just liked working out. I loved fitness, right? I just loved building muscles and getting faster and getting stronger. So I wanted to do health and physical education. And that was my plan until <laughs> I got so discouraged by well thought out advice given from respectable people that I decided to do something that was completely on the opposite spectrum. And I went into, uh, I want to say production operations management. And let me tell you, I hated every bit of it. I got D's, right? <laughs> I got D's in all my classes because I hated it. I, I just couldn't bring myself 
to love that the way I loved health and physical education. But see, not really having the support of being able to have someone at that time. And and I mean, look, I'll be honest with you. I didn't have enough confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to do this anyway. So I went and did what everybody else wanted me to do. And I made a decision to go into business, which was, it didn't completely derail my life, but it set me back, right? It set me back because because of this, this is why I flunked out of, out of college at, after like a couple of years. This is why I just had no direction. This is why I had no urge whatsoever to go to class. Like it was such a difficult time that could have been alleviated if I had someone sit down with me and say, you know what, what is it you really want to do? Because that's what university is about. That's what college is about, is taking them taking a moment to say, okay, what are you passionate about? And for me, without question, it would have been a major in health and physical education and a minor in drama or some kind of film study, hands down, right? That just would have been it because that is what I was most passionate about at the time. Um, so learn from my experience and really take a moment like, look, here's the thing. Your kids are going to do so much better, not just financially, because this is a beautiful thing. They're going to be happier. They're going to have greater self-confidence, greater self-esteem, greater joy within their lives if they are able to do what they love. And, and promise me, promise me, you will not dismiss that thing, that's the worst thing you can do for your child or for any child is to dismiss something that they're passionate about, okay? So in, in doing that, like maybe you, you're, you have a, a kid that's all of a sudden not really sure. They've done a few things here and there, right? So you know what you do? You pull out a piece of paper and you write down, okay, out of all the things you did in high school, out of all the things you did up to this point, what have you liked, right? What have you liked the most out of those things? Like, what would you put at the top of the list? And then all of a sudden, you're going to start breaking it down to where you see, okay, this thing shows up more. This thing shows up more. This thing shows up. Okay, now we have a bit of a pattern. So getting back to my story, because I ain't finished yet. (laughs) So when I made that choice, it moved me back. It made me lose about three or four years, right? But the beautiful thing about the all that is God, the universe, the great mother, whatever you want to call it, it continued to bring health and fitness back into my life, right? So you remember when I flunked out of school? Well, I came home and started working as a personal trainer and as a group fitness instructor. And I had the most compelling time of my life, right, doing that. Like, I didn't know it was like my thing yet, but I just enjoyed it, right? And then all of a sudden, it went away. I went back to school, went back to school, didn't do well again. (laughs) Came back home, wound up working a job that was okay at first, but then all of a sudden, I began to get bored because you know why? It wasn't something that I was passionate about. It wasn't something that I truly desired to do from my heart, you know? So a couple years passed by, guess what? Here comes health and fitness once again. And when I look over the course of my life, I see health and fitness pop up all the time. And would you know, that is the one area that I have made the most money unconsciously in, in my life, right? And it's, it's, it's one thing that has brought me so much joy to be able to help people to rise higher and to be greater for themselves, not only in just body, but in mind. And, 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 and spirit is, is also, you know, so from that example, even when I was in a position, and this is great because now all of a sudden we're not just talking about graduates. We're talking about people in their 30s, their 40s, their 50s. We're talking about people who are in college, people who are in high school. You can turn this all around by taking a moment and saying, OK, wait a minute. What is the thing that I would do? and do it for free and do it like I absolutely lost my mind with laughter and joy and happiness without being paid anything. Let's just say all of a sudden I inherited 10 or $15 million. I received 10 or $15 million 
And I had to figure out what I was going to do with my time. What is the thing that you would do at that point? Right. And all you have to do a lot of times is just look at your childhood. Because as a child, there's nothing, there's no smoke screens, right? There's nothing deterring you from following whatever it is that you want up until you get to a place where it's like, all right, now you got to think about getting a job. Now you got to think about doing this and all this other shit. And, you know, all of a sudden you realize all your joy is taken away. You're just kind of like, well, maybe I just might as well do what these idiots are telling me to do. (laughs) Oh. I mean, that's that's my thoughts now. But, you know, you kind of miss the path of following your truth. And your truth is tied into your passion. Your truth is tied into your joy. Your truth is what God has emanated as you for you to produce to this world. Right. And so it's up to us to say, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to dive into this thing, regardless of what it looks like it's going to pay right now. And we're just going to experience the utmost of joy because here is what happens, right? You give you the arc, so to speak. You start doing this thing for pure joy, right? You start doing it because you love it. And it's the most exciting, just fun experience ever. Then all of a sudden, that joy and that happiness becomes contagious, And all of a sudden, people want to start paying you for it. And it may be a little bit at the beginning, okay? It may be a little bit. But then all of a sudden, it starts to build. And all of a sudden, it starts to influence people in a way that where they are better off because you are doing what you love to do. It it becomes infectious, right? It becomes this, this all of a sudden whirlwind where your ability, your enthusiasm is the very best way to put it, has inspired so many people around you because you've taken the courage, the courage to follow what you love. And I'm telling you, I could honestly pick up like 10 years of my life if I would have realized that. Not that anything is bad or anything like that, because I love where I'm at right now. But I tell you, if I would have knew that 17 years old may 20 something of 1999, literally, it would have just changed my world. It would have just transformed it. And I'm telling you right now, especially as it relates to your kids, the kids that you know, they're getting ready to go out into the world and you gotta, and you just have to reassure them that it's okay. Not F that, it's not okay. It's absolutely fantastic to do what you love to do, regardless of anything, right? It's fantastic to do what you love to do and you're going to support them through that because I promise you, if you support them through that, that gives them confidence, which then adds to that joy, which then allows them to grow into who they're really supposed to be as opposed to navigating in a way that just makes you want to just pull your hair out And then all of a sudden, the problems begin to spread because there's just confusion all over the place. You know, I lived it. (laughs) I lived it for a long time before I wised up. So I want to ensure that that is not the case when it comes to yourself, when it comes to your kids, because once again, it applies to you just as much as it applies to the graduating class of 2020. Okay, so that whole idea of security is not real. It just isn't. It's a, it's a, it's it's smoke. You remember how we talked about smoke screens, and the people in podcasts can't hear me do that that whole John Cena thing. But that whole thing of security is a smoke screen, like basically wrapped up in a whole lot of fear. Right. And you hear it enough. All of a sudden you go running right into the smoke to meet the fear head on. And you realize that it's just a dead end. Right. Because it can do nothing for you because it's, it's, it's an illusion when we need to be running directly to the passion. We need to do, be running directly to the joy, directly to the point 
that just helps us rise up, right? There's a term, that term rise up means that you're just continually to ascend to different levels of consciousness that enable you to just stand in who you are and stand firmly in who you are, right? And the most important aspect of this is, is that you need that confidence to be able to do that. If you don't have that confidence to be able to do it, you're going to run back to the smoke screen, right? You're going to run back to the smoke screen. It's an actor for like 12, 13 years, still somewhat to a degree. And it's absolutely asinine to think how many actors and actresses are shot down by their parents because of one thing. One thing and one thing alone. Money, right? And, and I get it. You know, you need to survive. You need to live your life. You need to, to make sure you have everything. But I'm telling you, if you're following your heart, if you're following the joy within you, spirit, God, the universe takes care of that, right? It takes care of that. It ensures that if you're doing exactly what you emanated as me, me being God, I am going to take care of you and make sure that you can complete these steps to reach the highest potential. Because at the end of the day, for all of us, it's all about being at our highest potential, right? That's what it comes down to, reaching our highest potential and living out our highest potential. And when it's time to go, it's time to transition, period. You know, so if you're, you're moving around, not really figuring out, guess what? We're wasting time. We're wasting time that we could be used to fulfill the very thing that God created us to be. OK. And here is something that I've said on this podcast multiple times that if this is your first time hearing it, you need to hear it. Love and money resonate at the same vibration. OK. There's a scale that, that, like, just for instance, for example, if you broke it down and you broke down the energy of both of those things, right? Love, money, source are all the same. They're all nines on the, on the vibrational scale. They all come out to be nine, which means they all resonate at the exact same level, which is why people say, got to do what you love. Got to follow what you love because the truth of the matter is when that love becomes present, guess what? Money is right there, right? When it comes to love and money, it's like a quarter. Love being heads, money being tails. There's no separation. You can't separate a quarter, right? So the act of following what you love creates an opening, a pathway for money to flow into you. Right. Because it's the same. It's just the opposite side of the same coin. And they don't teach you this in school. Right. Because <laughs> if they did, I would have a billion dollars right now. But no, they don't teach you this in school. So it's up to you to know that this is why people unconsciously tell you, follow what you love, follow your heart, because that's where the money is. Not the job that all of a sudden just pays the bills and you hate the people and, you know, they work on your nerves and they're not doing anything and they tearing you down because it, the moment it looks like you're escalating yourself above them, all of a sudden, you ain't shit. I'm going to take you down. I'm going to tear you down. Make sure you, you belong here with us. Right. Why even put yourself through that? I mean, you just can put your hand on your heart and be like, what is it I really want to do in my life? What is it in my life that I would do if I knew that I couldn't fail, if I knew that every bit of cash would be provided? But here's the most wonderful, terrifying, yet interesting thing about the universe. So it's just not going to give you the bank right by itself. It's just not going to do that, right? Because you may take the money and then go be a bum somewhere. You know, <laughs> I mean... You know, not everybody. But see, the universe says, okay, let me see if you're going to commit. Okay. Okay. Commit. Okay. You said you commit. Okay. Let me see the action. Let me see the desire. Let me see the, the energy put towards it. 
And then you know what it does? It gives you the first step. Or in this case, the second step, because the first step was the commitment. Okay? And that, that first step could be like a lump sum or something like that. Or, you know, somehow or another, something is provided for to help you to do that thing. And it says, okay, keep going. And then you just keep going. <laughs> you keep going. And then it gives you another one. Whoop, just like that. And it goes line upon line, precept upon precept, step upon step. And before you know it, you look up and you look back and you are living your dream fully while being provided for, while being happy, while not abusing yourself because you've got to suppress emotions that want to come out, that have been wanting to come out since you were eight or nine years old. You're living your life. And it becomes the most epic experience ever, ever. Because that's what you've been placed here to put. That's what you've been placed here to do. Okay. When you do what you've been created to do, it is a joyous and enjoyable and enthusiastic. I emphasize those words. Experience. If that ain't present, you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're doing what somebody else is telling you to do. Right? So this podcast is called The Money Cure. Right? The money cure means the opportunity, the steps used to open up your life to allow, to allow money to come in in a way where it's your divine bounty, your divine trust. Right? Your divine inheritance. That's what this is about, and you can't do that unless you're following the blueprint of your soul, okay? That's, that's what it comes down to. That's what it comes down to. I'm telling you, I don't care if you're 65, 75, 45 years old, what is in your heart? Because if you're doing that, Everything takes care of itself. Yesterday we were on here. We talked about all the aspects of God. I'm going to give you this and then I'm going to let you go. And one of the biggest things, aspects of God you can declare over your life, especially when it comes to money and it comes to career and it comes to life purpose, is intelligence. Divine intelligence. Okay. And with divine intelligence, you know what that means? That means that the universe is, I don't want to say rigged. But it's set up for you to win. Okay? And for you to win big. And I'm talking about health, happiness, success, prosperity, money. Right? Now, the only problem is, is when you've been thrown so much other junk other than the idea of intelligence that you have to make your way back to that main interstate before you start flying down the road again. You know, that kind of deters us. But when you begin to understand that one of God's greatest aspects of, of what this energy being is, is intelligence. Intelligence means everything moves in harmony. Intelligence means everything has to be abundance. Everything has to work out for you and for me. And it has to work out wonderfully. But here's the trick. You got to let go. You've got to surrender to allow the universe, the all that is, the God force to do that. And if you need an example, look right outside your window. If you see any plants or maybe in your house, you see any trees, you see any grass, Pay attention to them because they get it. They understand it like nobody else does. They surrender. They just let the God force work through them. And if we, as human beings, do that also, you know the magic, the miracles, and all the stuff that could unfold if we just decided, you know what, we're going to surrender. We're just going to not go outside ourselves and reach for everything and, and decide we're going to do this and decide we're going to do that and grab this and grab that. No, we're just going to 
focus on our breath and go through life accepting, embracing, enjoying, being grateful. And we're just going to ease and I guarantee you. Oh, knock my mic over. <laughs> That's a harbinger. I guarantee you. Give me, give me a week of doing that, of, of not saying, I got, I got, I got, I get, I have, I have, and just go through life saying, All right now, I'm here. I'm just surrendering to the moment. Try that for a week, and I guarantee you, you'll never go back. You'll no, never go back to living the other way with, without question. Because all of a sudden, you've done this. And now everything can unfold and everything can come into you, come into your life easily. That's how it works. That's how it's supposed to work. And when it's time to act, you act, right? That's all to it. Okay? So remember that, intelligence. And because we're talking about graduating class of 2020, that same intelligence works for your children, right? Allow them to follow their hearts. Allow them to follow the thing that makes them the happiest, that makes them sing to the mountaintops. And I promise you, you'll look back four, five years later, after college, after high school, and you'll be like, wow. You, you, it will astound you how on point and in alignment with everything that you could desire for your children, they'll be doing that thing. It just is a matter of them trusting and following and knowing that they have your support. And I tell you, money is just like pancakes. You just show up, knife and fork, just start eating. You know, because it's just a byproduct of the passion, a byproduct of doing what you were placed here to do. And with that being said, ladies and gents, it has been a pleasure. I'm off. Have a wonderful Saturday. And remember, follow your heart. That's all you got to do. Follow your heart. Take care.